Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Professor Wool and today we're going to talk about uh, defining logical segments within a microsegmentation project. So to recap where we are in our thought process. We have a data center over here. It has multiple servers and systems inside it with all kinds of data that they carry. Uh, we have a technology that allows us to introduce filtering. We have a filtering fabric underlying the data center that lets us control any type of communication inside the data center and also traffic coming into and out of the data center. Uh, and we can write policy to allow or block any type of traffic like that. Uh, we've also gone through the exercise of discovery. So we've actually identified from various sources uh, from the network what flows are visible inside the data center so we know uh, that traffic is coming in from the partners area to let's say the financial data uh, we also recognize that applications communicate with other applications inside the data center so we've done all that. We've also done some kind of uh, data analysis and we've identified which servers and which systems carry sensitive data, regulated data like uh, uh, credit card information or personal information that is subject to either PCI or GDPR or, or uh, healthcare data, etc. Uh, so we've done all this homework. We have a reasonable picture in our mind what's communicating what and what types of information are present in the data center. And then we can move ahead and actually start defining the segments. So based on this information, we could define data driven centers. So we could define a segment over here for the regulated PCI data. We could define a segment over here for personally identifiable information. Uh, we could define an, uh, a segment over here for the financial data. And then we could also define segments that are based on traffic that we've discovered. We can define uh, zones and segments over here for the applications, applications one, two, and three that we've identified through our uh, traffic discovery. Once we've decided what the segments are going to look like, that drives what the policy is going to be when we introduce it into the fabric. So the first thing to remember is that the last rule on the policy must be from anywhere to anywhere with any service deny. Otherwise, we're still allowing all traffic and that's not good. So our goal is to have a policy that allows all the traffic we actually want to support and then have a default policy saying and everything else, no. Now, what types of rules are we going to be writing in this policy? So first of all, we're going to be writing rules that f allowing traffic between segments. So imagine application number one needs to communicate and access data that is part of the zone of application number three. So we will have to write a rule allowing that because that traffic is crossing the segment boundary and will only be allowed if there's an explicit, explicit rule in the policy allowing it. Likewise, the e-commerce servers might need access to the financial data. So we might need a rule for that as well. So we need to write rules for all of these cross segment flows. That's not all. We also need to write rules for traffic that comes into or goes out of the data center. Imagine you have people in the finance department that need to connect to the financial data inside the data center. Their desktops are outside of the data center. So these systems are not strictly under the control of the filtering fabric. However, the flows coming from them into the data center are visible to the fabric and need to be controlled and must have rules supporting them. So we will have a certain amount of rules referring to external entities that are outside of the data center that need to be inside the fabric. Which types of rules do we not need to write? Well, we don't need to write any rules for traffic that is contained completely inside one segment. If there is any kind of traffic between servers that all support application one and they're all in the same segment, we don't need to write any rules for them because traffic that's contained inside one segment is by default allowed 
It's not filtered, so we don't have to write rules for that. So less work for us. Once we've under understood how this is all going to be playing out, we can consider the question of how many segments do we actually want to have in our data center. And there's uh, 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 a, a balance here, or a trade-off, between how many segments we might have and um, how tight our policy is, and that affects how much effort we need to spend. So in general, if we, have, we can have many segments, at an extreme we could have a segment for each individual server, we can define a specific segment just for that server, or we could have a very small number of, of segments, we could have two or three, uh, a handful of segments. If we go with a very, very large number of segments, then we can write very granular filtering rules that control access to one or two or three servers. Whereas if we have a coarse um, segmentation, we can only write coarse rules that refer to big chunks of the data center homogeneously, and we have lesser control. So in terms of where we want to be on this picture, we want to be up here in terms of security. We want to be able to write very granular policy. We want to control flows very, very specifically. So it's advantageous to have many, many different segments. However, if we do that, then we pay by work. We have to define all these segments. We have to maintain them. And that's a lot of effort, both in the startup phase and also ongoing in the maintenance phase. We will need to continue addressing all of these different segments. So in terms of effort, we actually prefer to be down here, where we spend a small amount of effort, but then we pay by having coarse security policies. So there's a trade-off here between how much work we need to spend and how much security we get for that effort. And each organization has to find their own sweet spot in terms of where you want to be on the spectrum. And with that, thank you for your attention.